Moms are the best and they teach us all the important things. Today I'm going to share 10 style lessons I learned from my mom. Hey, this is Netta. Welcome to my channel. I hope women over 40 have fun with fashion and feel confident in their style. Today, I am so excited to share this video because this is a little bit different for me. I'm going to talk about the 10 style lessons I learned from my mom. You know, we learn most of the important things in life from our moms if we're lucky and we're blessed, and I've definitely been blessed. Um, but style is not something we always think about when it comes to like lessons that our parents passed down to us or that our mothers passed down to us. But my mother, knowingly or not, instilled a lot of the foundations in me as, you know, as a, a you know, a young kid and a teenager that I still use to this day and that I still look back on and think on and um, and see her wisdom in. So for those of you who don't know, I am actually Egyptian. So both of my parents are Egyptian. I was born in Cairo. We moved to the United States when I was five years old. So some of the lessons that I learned from my mom have a little bit of a cultural aspect to them. Some of them are generational. Most of them in some way or another still apply and are still relevant today. So uh, she obviously, in addition to teaching me my values and my faith and the importance of family and the importance of hard work um, and all of the, the really foundational things that, that help you be a, a functioning and successful adult, she also showed more than she told um, how to be stylish, how to pull ourselves together, how to be presentable, um, how to look our best wherever we were at, whether we were hanging out around the house or whether we were just running to the grocery store or whether we were going somewhere fancy. She always instilled in us the importance of putting our best selves out there every single day. So, so thankful to her for all of those amazing lessons. And even though my mom and I are very different, she is definitely um, more low key when it comes to her style and growing up she used to call herself a tomboy she said she was always running around and playing outside and getting dirty and all of that stuff and I was never a tomboy um, she was not into makeup or skincare or those things the way that I was um, she always has had a beautiful sense of style and has always pulled herself together um, and and presented herself really really well so um, I've always looked up to the way that she has consistently done that throughout my life so Without further ado, 10 style lessons I learned from my mom. Okay, the first one is, and this is, this is so, this is part cultural, part family, part style tip, and it's that jewelry isn't just the best gift, it's the only gift. So growing up, uh, we always saw jewelry as being pretty much the best if not the only thing that you would you could give somebody as a gift. I mean, it was just what we loved and what we um, gravitated towards when it was you know when it was time to commemorate a special occasion. So um, if I got Dean's List or if I got an award for something or on my birthday or different occasions, my parents would always buy me a little piece of jewelry. Sometimes it was a you know a significant piece, um, something gold from Egypt. Sometimes it was something fun that they picked up at antique shows my dad would buy me help me collect vintage cameos for a while because I was really into them remember he bought me a little antique sapphire and diamond ring um, and so jewelry just became a way of commemorating special occasions and a way of showing somebody how we felt about them so I, I always just grew up surrounded by jewelry noticing jewelry paying attention to jewelry loving jewelry uh, my grandmother gave me actually there are two of them one is hidden and one is out my grandmother gave me these two very traditional classic Egyptian gold bangles or that yellow gold that they're I don't know if they're 21 or 22 or 23 whatever some carat um, but these gold bangles you know probably when I was in high school maybe early college um, so these are really traditional I probably should have a third one because I really like to wear bangles and threes but um, so these you know I've had forever um, so having that traditional Egyptian gold jewelry was really always important to us it was all about gold I mean obviously silver is a big big thing in Egypt too but my family really liked gold so you know we, we have the cartouches with our names on them I have a couple of them um, 
and these were a big deal we would wear them on you know a gold chain and i still pull those out sometimes and um, this is just costume jewelry this is like what you would wear if you were dressing up as an egyptian person this isn't even real but it's just um it's just so fun and um a nod to my egyptian heritage so really jewelry has always been such a significant gift giving um, part of our lives and just something that we've always paid attention to when kevin and i first met well actually not when we first met a couple of months before we got married he um he and i were visiting my parents here in florida and we went to an antique store and he bought me this vintage platinum and diamond watch and i remember coming back and showing it to my mom and my aunts and they said he's gonna propose and they were right a couple months later he proposed and we got married so they knew the significance of somebody buying you a special piece of jewelry was uh, an indicator that they were getting kind of serious about you. So anyway, jewelry isn't just the best gift, it's the only gift. Okay, the second style tip that my mom always instilled in us is to moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. And in our case, she wasn't even really talking about our faces because, you know, we would have been in high school or college or whatever where we had plenty of moisture on our own, um, but on our, on our bodies. So if you have olive skin or any amount of melanin in your skin, you know that dry skin on, on especially on darker skin just does not look cute so we had bottles and pumps of body lotion everywhere all over the house by the back door in the car um in the living room in the kitchen it's it was just everywhere all over the house and my mom was always applying body lotion and encouraging us to apply body lotion so if we left the house and we didn't have body lotion on she always had some in the car for us so she always reminded us make sure you have lotion on your arms and legs and you keep your skin looking hydrated and moisturized and beautiful so body lotion was a huge thing in our house growing up and it still is a huge thing in my in my life now i'm still always encouraging my girls like did you put your lotion on did you put your lotion on make sure your skin is moisturized okay the third thing is this is going to sound kind of harsh but you have to suffer to be beautiful. So no, my mom did not put us through any ancient Egyptian um, torturous beauty uh, beauty rituals. It was more about um, just being adult about it when you're having your hair done, when you're having your eyebrows done, when you're... Um, you know, getting waxed, all of the other things. We all know that some of the rituals that we that we go through in the name of beauty can be a little uncomfortable, whether it's having our hair done, waxing, Botox, um, skin treatments, extractions, all of those things can have a little level of discomfort in them. And I used to moan and groan. I was so tender headed when I was really little. And anytime she would comb my hair, put my hair up, detangle my hair, I would just complain and complain and complain. And that's when she would say, you have to suffer to be beautiful. Do you want your hair to look like a mess or do you want to look cute? If you want to look cute, just let me do my hair or let me do your hair. So um, I, I didn't even have curly hair until I was like I hit puberty until I was 13. And then it was sort of like I woke up one day, my hair was twice as thick and it was really curly. It was actually just kind of baby fine and half the thickness that it is now. In spite of that, kids don't like having their hair detangled. And I was the biggest whiner of all about having my hair done. And so that was her remind, her gentle reminder, you have to suffer to be beautiful. Um, if you want your hair to look cute, you're just gonna have to sit still and let me do it. So um, she also would uh, tweeze my eyebrows and that was a little uncomfortable when the time came for me to tweeze my eyebrows, not, you know, not as a young kid, but um, I just kind of, quickly learned, okay, I really like the results. So I'm just going to let, let her do her thing so that I look um, cute and feel cute all day long. The next style lesson I learned from my Egyptian mother is that no woman needs to have hair below her eyes. So let me explain. Um, obviously, eyelashes, eyebrows, hair on the top of your head, all beautiful and feminine. But any hair from here down is kind of unnecessary and not not necessarily cute so again this is kind of a cultural thing but it's really traditional waxing and sugaring are a really big part of our culture and threading all of those older um, old school hair removal techniques and so I grew up with my mom making something called halawa halawa is it's, it basically means almost like candy but you make it out of honey or sugar and it's a home 
sugaring technique. So she used honey because it was easier. She'd let the honey, I'm gonna insert a little video so you could see, she would let the honey kind of boil over and then um, as it as it settled down, she'd quickly pour it onto a ceramic plate and then you would just take it out and you would you know, play with it with your hands a little bit until it became this wax that you would use to wax your legs, arms. And so again, in our culture, um, legs and arms are both supposed to always be smooth as well as everything else. So I remember being 11 or 12 and asking to have my legs waxed for the first time. And oh my goodness, it was so painful. I am pretty pain tolerant now as an adult, but I remember that like was one of the most painful. And, and uh, you know, I had to beg my mom to do it because she thought I was too young, but I was like, please wax my legs. But I remember the results were incredible because not only does waxing remove the hair, which was miraculous on its own, because as you can imagine, I had a lot of it everywhere, but it was also kind of an exfoliating treatment. And so your skin looked brighter and fresher and cleaner and just prettier. And I remember feeling like a million dollars after my legs were waxed for the first time. But she would wax our legs at home. She would use that home sugaring treatment. She'd wax our legs and our arms and you know, we'd wax our eyebrows sometimes, although that was a little more precise. Usually we would just end up tweezing. Um, but we, you know, hair removal was an important part of, of looking and feeling our best and definitely an important part of our culture. Traditionally, women would get their whole bodies waxed right before their weddings. But um, my mom just really thinks smooth arms and smooth legs are essential. To this day, I am a big fan of hair removal. I just really like the way my legs and arms look when there's nothing on them. I feel like they, they just look so much smoother and looks more polished. Um, and although I have resorted to shaving for the last, you know, gosh, 30 years or so, because I live in Florida, I don't want the regrowth or the, the you know, the hair growing out again. I do get my bikini area waxed and my eyebrows waxed. So waxing is still a part of my life. I still very much believe in it. And if I had a little less hair, I probably be, would be getting waxed um, more regularly. But hair removal is essential. That was one of the style lessons I learned from my Egyptian mom. Okay, the next lesson I learned is black is for funerals and for mourning okay so this is a little tongue-in-cheek because as you guys can tell i'm wearing black i love black black is one of my favorite colors i wear it quite a bit to this day my mom hardly ever wears black and she definitely does not wear black on its own if she wears black she wears it layered with something she adds color to the outfit but growing up in egypt you know black was um, reserved for funerals or for mourning and so it has this really somber connotation to her and she just is not a huge fan of just solid black so I apologize that I'm wearing all black mom um, but usually um, I also like to add color to my black so sometimes of course I'll do a monochromatic look I do love a good head to toe black outfit on occasion, but I really got my love of color from my mom. My mom loves color and loves bold color and has never been afraid to wear color. And so my you know embrace of color and my love of color and my adventurousness when it comes to color really comes from her. Her favorite color is turquoise. You know I love red and hot pink. She's always loved me in red. And so growing up, anytime we saw something red, she would gravitate towards that for me. And so my love of color and my appreciation of adding color and almost always wanting a pop of color or an accent of color in every uh, neutral outfit, that really is something that I owe to my mom. So black head to toe was never her thing. To this day, it's still never her thing. Okay, the next style lesson I learned from my mom, this I just it, this keeps coming back to me. I keep I keep having experiences where I'm reminded of how right she was about this, but um, don't match your outfit to your skin. Your outfit and your skin should not be the exact same color. So recently I got sent, and I shared this in my private Facebook group, I got sent an outfit. I asked for it in black, but I got sent the outfit in camel, which is essentially the color of my face it's the color of my skin and when I put that outfit on it was a loungewear outfit so it was like kind of a skinny pant legging thing and then um, a v-neck top and um, especially since it was all kind of fitted all the way down and it was my skin tone 
I look naked in that outfit. There's no other way to put it. Like if someone saw me 20, 30 feet away, they would think I was wearing their clothing <laughs> because it matched my skin too closely. Exactly. It's just not a cute look. Not only does, does it, like I said, make you look a little naked, but it's just, it doesn't do anything to bring out any flattering colors in your eyes, in your skin, in your hair. It, it doesn't accentuate or highlight any of our best features when we wear a color that so closely matches our skin tone. So um, that was a great tip that my mom always shared. Don't wear those beigey beige colors head to toe because that's not going to be cute on you because your skin is beige. So I would say that that really would apply to all of us if we could look at our um, hair and skin and and uh, especially our skin tone and not match our outfit directly to our skin tone. Um, we're going to find that that shades that are, are a little bit deeper or a little bit lighter than that are going to be so much more flattering. Okay, don't leave the house without blush and earrings. That is the next style lesson. Don't leave the house without blush and earrings. Oh my goodness. So growing up in the 80s, a lot of times the emphasis would be on the lips and the eyes and I'd have these dramatic matte lips and dramatic eyes and I would do nothing on the cheeks and the, the, the face would be like this powdery um, matte, you know, probably a couple shades too light because everybody looks at our pictures from the 80s is like, why are your faces so light? I don't think they look like that in real life. I think that was just in pictures like the flash or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, we blush was not as much of a thing and I would try to get out of the house without blush and my mom would be like, oh no, oh no, your face looks washed out. You need a little color in your cheeks. You need to bring some life to your face. And so her thing was, um, don't leave the house no matter where you're going. If you're going to Publix, and you don't have any other makeup on, your hair is pulled back in a ponytail, or whether you're going to prom, you need blush and you need earrings. Don't leave the house without blush or earrings to go anywhere, anywhere. So both my sister and I had our ears pierced, I think when we were born in the hospital, like that was just a tradition. You you had a baby girl, her ears were pierced. Um, and so my brother was the third, and when he was born, my dad was like, you're not piercing his ears. Because my mom kept thinking, What's missing about this baby? This baby doesn't have earrings. So growing up, I had a pair of tiny little pearl studs, um, uh, pearl and gold studs that my parents got me at, you know, at birth that I wore all the way up until I was 11 or 12 and I lost one. My sister had little turquoise um, and gold studs that she wore all growing up. And so that was all, all, you know, all of us and our cousins, we all had the little earrings that we got at birth and we wore those, you know, really until middle school. And so, um, um, I, I've always worn earrings. Earrings were such an important part of, um, you know, kind of getting ready and getting out the door. And really, they almost never came off because they were they were real and they were gold. As I got a little older and I started wearing costume jewelry, and sometimes I would, you know, forget or try to leave a pair of earrings out of my outfit. My mom always stopped us at the door, and made sure we had blush and we had earrings. Okay, do your nails. And I'm so sorry, mommy. My nails are not done right now. It's been a busy couple weeks and I just haven't done it. And, but I will tell you, there is something about having your nails, your fingernails and your toenails done that just makes you feel so pretty and so polished and can really make you feel pulled together. Especially on those days when you're super, super casual and you're just kind of lounging around and you know we're all more casual these days and all spending a little bit more time at home these days. And so just glancing down at your hands and seeing your nails look really nice and pretty just kind of gives you a little mood boost. And to me, for some reason, having my nails makes me feel cleaner. I don't know why, but that's weird, but it's true. And it definitely makes me feel more polished and more pulled together, even if the rest of me doesn't quite measure up to it. I'm like, at least my nails are done. At least my nails are done. So we would sit around the kitchen table, my mom and sister and I, and catch up while we did our nails. And it was just such a ritual to always be doing our nails. We always had this big bin of nail polishes and nail polish remover and all of the tools. And we would just sit around and do our nails together. We never went to a nail salon. It was just not a thing. I never even thought of going, even even me, I never thought of going to a nail salon until college and a friend recommended it before we had a formal. And I was like, oh, you can go somewhere to get your nails done. <laughs> but um, we just did them at home, but we just loved the ritual of doing our nails and making ourselves feel beautiful. So um, do your nails. That's one of the style lessons I learned from my mom. Okay, pull your hair back off your face. So that is the reason for today's hairstyle. Um, my mom has always, it's always been this kind of um, 
uh, battle that we've had where she has always wanted me to wear my hair short. I've always wanted to wear my hair long. When I was little, like before I was 10 or 11, my hair was always short. It was always like shoulder length. My mom thought it was so much more elegant. She liked my hair out of my face. She did not want my hair on my face. And she always said, pull your hair back so we can see your beautiful face. Pull your hair back so we can see your beautiful face. To this day, if I hop on over to my mom's house and I have my hair in a bun, she's like, oh, your hair's up. I like it. So she likes my hair up or out of my face in her, her preference would probably be for me to wear my hair short. She has never worn her hair long and I've never worn my hair short. So we are complete opposites when it comes to hair, but she always em encouraged me to keep my hair off of my face so that people can see my face, can see my expressions, and in, in, in her opinion, that is a much more flattering look. So um, as somebody with a lot of hair that is frequently pushing it out of my face, I can appreciate the wisdom of keeping your hair off your face. Okay, that is also very closely linked, that rule, to open your big, beautiful eyes and look. So very kindly when I was a kid and I could not find things and I was never a good finder. Like if she sent me to the kitchen to get something or if I went to the back door to get whatever, like I could never find that thing. Now I live with a family of non-finders. Nobody can find anything unless <laughs> unless I find it for them in the house. So now I totally get my mom's frustration with that topic. But um, as, as a kid, she would tell me, open your big, beautiful eyes and look. And that was very closely linked to pull your hair back off your face so you can open your big, beautiful eyes and look. Okay, so not having your hair in your face, that's one of the style lessons I learned from my mom. The last one is... And this is so critical, and I think so many women forget it to this day. Don't leave the store without a full outfit. Let me explain. So in the 80s, my sister and mom and I would spend most Saturdays walking around the mall, going to Cinnabon or Sparrows, um, checking out Contempo Casuals or Wet Seal or The Limited. Um, and usually we'd go home with one or two cute things at least. And that was just kind of our bonding time. We would just spend the day together at the mall and enjoy our time together there. Um, before we left a store, Burdines was our favorite store. Burdines, the Florida store back in the day. Before we left Burdines, we would um, kind of uh, consolidate and we would look at our purchases and we would make sure that we had a full outfit. So her rule or her guideline was to never buy something that you did not have a plan for in your wardrobe right brilliant now this is considered a hack or a tip this is so, so is such mom wisdom and common sense right don't leave the store with a top if you don't have a bottom at home to wear it with don't leave the store with a pair of earrings that you don't have an outfit to go with don't leave the store with a dress that you don't have shoes to match um so in the 80s everything was a little bit more matchy matchy and i'll never forget going to the juniors department at Burdines and buying a santa cruz outfit it was just so stylish at the time. It was uh, um, blues and greens and it was striped and I think it had a top and a flowy skirt and a vest. And um, we had to stop at the jewelry counter on the way out so that we could buy the blue and green earrings that went with the blue and green outfit, right? Because that's what you did back in the 80s. Now I know um, not everything has to be so matchy-matchy, but the rule or the guideline of don't buy something that you don't have at least a couple of things to wear with it in your existing wardrobe and you don't have at least a couple of places to wear it. So that's my update on my mom's style lesson. Do you have two, maybe even three things to wear with that item in your closet? If not, then you should be finding those things where you are at before you even leave the store or the, or the mall um, and then or the website. And then do you have a couple of different places you can wear it? You're gonna have a lot less um, opportunity to wear something formal, something really dressy than you are obviously to wear a basic piece or um, something that's a little bit more casual. So really look at your lifestyle and ask yourself, do, you've got, do you have a couple of places to wear that? Is that really gonna fit your life and is it really gonna fit your wardrobe? So that is something that my mom taught me and taught me really, really well. And um, to this day, I always am an advocate of making sure that those pieces fit into your wardrobe and that they fit into your lifestyle, which is why I always recommend spending money on the things you're going to get the most use out of and um, saving and getting deals on the things like cocktail dresses and holiday dresses and special occasion items that you're only going to wear once or twice. So 
Ah, oh, that was a lot of it was a lot of information, but as you can tell, so much good wisdom from my mom. So much of it that has st- stood the test of time and of cultural differences, um, and a lot of it that has really gone to shape who I am and how I dress and how I present myself to this day. So I love my mom. I know that you all have had probably um, amazing expertise and wisdom shared with you from your moms as well. And I would love to hear what what is the number one style lesson your mom ever taught you or life lesson. Maybe it's not a style lesson. Maybe that was not ever her thing and you have other wisdom that she imparted to you. I'd love to hear what your mom passed on to you in the comments below. Um, Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. You know I am so grateful that you have supported my YouTube channel, that you like, that you subscribe, and that you comment on my videos. It means so, so much to me. Um, As you know, I have an amazing club that I call the Style Confidence Club. It's just a, a lovely community of women from all over the world, all supporting each other, going through a program with my guidance and um, love up their style. We're doing it together in the happiest and most supportive place on the internet. So if you're interested in that, there's a link in the description box. We would love to have you join us. Um, As always, thank you again for sticking with me and I will see you in the next video. Bye!